this video I'm making it specifically for M105 at IUK. It is examples from section 7-3. This is going to be a couple of examples simplifying a radical by factoring. All right, and we are going to assume that all variables are positive, so therefore we will not be using any absolute value bars at this point. Okay, so in this first example here, I've got the square root of x to the fifth, y to the thirteenth, z to the eighth. All right, and it is a square root, so I'm going to go ahead and put that two in there just so we can see it. All right, now, usually the way um, I go about teaching this is, at this point, we've done quite a bit of these, and so whenever you've got the variables with the exponents, the first thing I look for is, can I take 5 divided by 2? Can I take 13 divided by 2? Can I take 8 divided by 2? All right, if I can, on any one of those, like this, z to the 8th, 8th divided by 2, then I know this is a perfect square root, okay? Now, the problem is this and this is not a perfect square root. So I'm going to break it up by factoring. I need to break this up into x to some power times x to some power and force a perfect square root. Okay, so I look at this and I go 5 divided by 2. Doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down by 1 on my exponent. I'm going to go up to an x to the 4th. And then, okay, can I take 4 divided by 2? Well, yes, I can. So that means x to the 4th is a perfect square root. So I'm going to do a square root of x to the 4th times, okay, now I took four of these. I've got one left over. So square root of an x. All right, x to the 4th times x gives me that x to the fifth. So I have factored it correctly. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. 13 divided by 2. Can't do that. So I'm going to start counting down. All right. If I go to 12, 12 divided by 2. Yep, that works. So that means a y to the 12th is going to be a perfect square root. So I'm going to have a y to the 12th. All right. Now this was a y to the 13th. I just used 12 of them. I have one of them left over. So I've got a square root of a y left over y to the 12th times the y gives me that y to the 13th. Okay, now on the z, I can divide right away. 8 divided by 2 gives me a 4, so I know it's a perfect square root, so I'm just going to have, I'm going to go ahead and take that perfect square root, a z to the 4th. I took the square root, the bars go away. All right, now let's go through the next line. All right, this one we know is a perfect square, okay? So 4 divided by that 2 gives me an x squared. I took the square root, so the, the radical goes away. I cannot do anything with this one, okay? So that one stays square root of x, okay? Now, this one, 12 divided by the 2. I can, 12 divided by 2 is 6, so this is a perfect square root. I'm going to have a y to the 6th. No radical bars on that one because I took the square root, all right? This one right here, square root of y. I cannot simplify, so it's going to stay a square root of y. And I've already taken care of this one. It's a z to the 4th. All right, at this point, you take everything that is on the outside of the bar and uh, outside of the radical and squish it together. Everything underneath the radical, you're going to multiply together. So I'm going to have an x squared. I'm going to have a y to the sixth. I'm going to have a z to the fourth. And then square root of the x times the y underneath. Okay, it, it is and does look like quite a bit of work, all right, but factoring it and breaking this apart and looking at it individually is going to make it a, a whole lot easier, I think. Okay, now on this one, all right, I do the number by itself, then I do each of the uh, letters individually. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to add an extra line here. Let's do the cube root of the 32. I'm going to separate that away from the variables, cube root of x to the 9th and then cube root of the y to the 16th. Okay, I'm going to look at these three things separately. Okay, now on this, you're going to do cube root. You're going to try to find the biggest cube root that goes into 32. All right, hopefully um, you've got that memorized. If not, you're going to be using the list. I've showed this in some of the other videos. All right, for those students that are actually in my 105 class, um, you can go to my website. You can download this. It's your perfect square roots, your perfect cube roots, your perfect fourth roots, and your perfect fifth roots. Okay, so um, definitely, if not, you can Google and find one of these as well. All right, but I want the biggest perfect cube root that goes into 32. So I'm going to go down my cubes column here. 1 into 32, yep. 8 into 32, yep, that goes. 27 into 32, does not. 64 is bigger than 32, so I'm done at that point. So then that means the cube root of 8 is the biggest cube root that goes into 30. 2, 32 divided by 8 is 4. So I can break this up into the cube root of an 8 times the cube root of a 4. We always want 
to pick the biggest cube root to go into this and then that way I know I only have one little break up here before then I will be perfectly um, simplified there. Okay, now again, we're going to take the look at these exponents here, 9 divided by 3. I can take 9 divided by 3. That means this is a perfect cube root as well. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. I'm going to have an x to the third because that is a perfect cube root. All right, now on this one, 16 divided by 3 doesn't work. So this is not a perfect cube root. So I'm going to take the 16. I'm going to go down 1 to 15, and I'm going to try to divide. 15 divided by 3, yep, that works. So I'm going to break this up into the cube root of a y to the 15th times the cube root of, all right, I had 16 y's, I'm using 15 of them here, y to the first there, so just y. All right, now I'm gonna go through, cube root of eight, we know is a two. All right, cube root of four, I cannot simplify anymore, so I'm just gonna keep that right the way it is. All right, this has already been done, so I'm just gonna have an x to the third there. All right, this one, I can divide, 15 divided by three, is 5, so that means this is a perfect cube root, so I'll have a y to the fifth right there, and then this 1 divided by 3, can't do that, I just have to leave the cube root of y there alone. Everything that has been pulled out of the radical gets multiplied together out in front, so 2, x to the third, y to the fifth, everything left underneath that cube root stays, so cube root of a 4y. All right, and again, on both of these examples, we are assuming all variables are positive, so on this one, not using any of the absolute value bars. So just two real quick examples here showing you how to um, simplify kind of a higher order radical here. This is just a re regular square root there by factoring, taking what is underneath there and breaking it up into its individual parts. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with a friend so they can benefit too, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.